Select grade briskets tend to be dry because they don't have a lot of fat, but they're cheap and with meat prices the way they are today, it would be great if we could find a way to make them taste just as good as a prime grade brisket. Enter the sous vide machine. Supposedly, sous vide is the way to go if you're trying to make a lean cut of meat taste amazing, but will it work on brisket? That's what I'm testing in this video. In my research for this video, the most thoroughly tested sous vide brisket recipe I found was by J. Kenji Lopez Alt. He tested sous vide a brisket at 135 degrees, 145 degrees, and 155 degrees Fahrenheit. And what he found is that 155 for 24 hours is kind of the sweet spot to retain moisture, render the connective tissue and the fat, and get the grain of the meat to separate into that kind of traditional brisket texture. After sous vide he then smokes the brisket for three hours to get a bark. So I decided to go with the 155 degrees as a sous vide temperature based on his article, but unlike his recipe, I wanted to smoke the brisket first and then finish it in the sous vide afterwards. And there's three reasons for this. First, if it's exposed to smoke after it's already cooked, that chemical reaction that produces the smoke ring won't occur. Second, there's better bark formation and smoke flavor created by smoking it first. And third, the logistics of smoking a brisket the day before and then leaving it in my sous vide overnight until lunch or dinner the next day are really just more convenient for me. I'm beginning by lighting my Oklahoma Joe's offset with some lump charcoal. I'm using my grill gun as always because it lights charcoal in like 60 seconds and it's super fun to use. The link's in the description section below if you guys want to check one of these out. It's an investment that will make your life easier for years to come if you have an offset smoker. Now moving on to trimming the brisket. This is a select grade brisket or as we call them in Canada, a double A brisket. There's three USDA grades of brisket we actually care about and we can buy in the grocery store. There's USDA Prime or Canadian Prime, which has a ton of intramuscular fat marbling, USDA Choice or Canadian AAA, which has a medium amount of marbling, and finally USDA Select or Canadian AA, which has a low amount of marbling and it's very lean. Because select grade slash double A grade briskets don't have a lot of intramuscular fat, there's less of it that renders down over the course of the cook and makes it into your mouth, which means with a select grade brisket, we're largely missing out on one of the three primary substances that creates that perception of moisture and juiciness when you bite into a slice of brisket. This is great if you're like me and you're trying to get in shape. I'm at the point in my life now where I want to eat healthier and get in the best shape of my life. I really want to be around for a long time for my family. Anyway, to make up for this lack of fat in a select grade brisket, we need to look at the other two actors that make a brisket juicy. These are water in the form of trapped moisture between muscle fibers and within muscle tissue cells and collagen, which converts to gelatin over time and adds to the perceived juiciness of a brisket. Now, water is normally the least reliable of these three substances because we lose more of it as the internal temperature of the meat increases. Here's a graph from the book Food Lab by J. Kenji Lopez-Alt that shows how much moisture loss increases as final cooking temperature increases. This graph only goes up to about 160, but I can tell you from my own testing that the moisture loss in brisket finished at 200 degrees plus can be up to 40% or more. So with a 12 pound brisket, we're looking at a loss of around 4.8 pounds of water that never actually makes it to your mouth to add to that perception of juiciness. But with the sous vide method, we're not going all the way up to 203 internal. We're going up to around 160 internal, which is an 18% or 2.16 pound loss of moisture in the form of water. That means there's 2.64 more pounds of water or five additional cups that actually makes it into the mouths of your guests when your brisket is done at 155 in the sous vide rather than taking the brisket all the way up to 200 plus degrees internal when you're smoking it on the smoker all the way to finish. That's a really substantial amount of water that will add to the juiciness of the brisket and it's the reason that the sous vide can turn this select grade brisket into a juicy piece of meat. But another factor is will it be tender as well as juicy? More on that soon. Now the brisket goes on the smoker and I'm cooking it low and slow until it reaches around 160 degrees internal. You can go above 160 all the way up to 180 if you really want some darker bark, but remember the higher in temperature you go, the more moisture you're losing. So to get the bark darker at a lower temperature faster, I do a couple of things. I'll burn cherry wood, which is denser, and in my experience, it tends to produce a darker bark faster. Uh, I'll try throwing fat on the fire periodically and I'll run a bit dirtier of a fire so it's producing more smoke, uh, but not too dirty, just a little bit less clean than I normally do. 
All of these things seem to make the bark darker faster uh, to me, but it's kind of just anecdotal. I haven't really tested them in a video yet, so take it with a grain of salt. Now, after the brisket reaches 160 internal, I'm taking it off the smoker and it's time to get vacuum sealed. Like I said before, I'm trying to be healthier so I can be around for a long time. It's all part of my vision to be an oak tree of the family. And like an oak tree, I need to be strong. But I often wonder, am I the man my father or grandfather was when they were my age? Studies have shown that testosterone levels in men have dropped 1% per year since the 1980s. That means my testosterone levels could be 30% less than my dad when he was my age. Low testosterone can have all kinds of effects on men like loss of sex drive and effects on mood and loss of muscle mass, which could prevent me from getting the results I want in the gym. That's why I'm glad Let's Get Check sponsored this video and sent me a test kit to make sure a testosterone imbalance isn't getting in the way of me making gains and becoming the swole dad I want to be. Gone are the days where you have to beg your doctor to get tested for low testosterone. Let's Get Checked is a worldwide leader in at-home testing kits, and their male hormone test lets you easily test your testosterone levels at home. Just order a test kit that arrives at your door in discreet packaging, then prick your finger to collect some blood, send it back to them with the included box and prepaid UPS shipping, and then you'll be able to view your results on the app within two to five days. Turns out my results were normal, so at least now I have that peace of mind to know that nothing is going to get in the way of me gaining muscle mass and getting into the best shape of my life. If you guys want to test yourself and see if low testosterone is holding you back, then click the link in the description below to get 25% off your first test kit from Let's Get Checked. Now that the bark is set on my brisket, I'm sealing it up in a vacuum sealed bag and I'm placing it in the sous vide bath at 155 degrees. Because I've already been smoking the brisket for around eight hours, it doesn't need a full 24 hours in the sous vide. So I put it in at 10 p.m. on Friday night. My plan is to pull it at around 4 p.m. on Saturday, slice into it right away and then serve it for dinner. Now, I mentioned earlier that I was concerned about the brisket being tender as well as juicy. The reason I normally take my briskets up to 200 plus degrees degrees internal is because the intramuscular tissue and collagen start rendering a lot faster at that temperature and the conversion of collagen to gelatin is what gives the brisket its characteristic wiggle wiggle. So how do we get that wiggle wiggle when we're not going up to 200 plus degrees internal? Well, the denaturing and solubility of collagen in a brisket is affected by time as much as it is by temperature. Some studies even say that it starts to break down as low as 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but the lower the temperature, the longer it takes. So leaving it at 155 degrees Fahrenheit for 19 to 20 hours should have a similar effect on rendering the collagen as it would if we brought it all the way up to 200 degrees internal for just a few minutes. That's the theory anyway. We're going to find out how it turns out in this video. 19 hours later at 4 p.m. the next day, I removed the brisket from the sous vide bag and I got ready to slice into it. My brisket don't jiggle jiggle, it holds. I wanna see it wiggle wiggle, faux show. It make me wanna dribble dribble, you know. Smoking in my Joes, you really oughta know. Three inch stack, it's compact. But really that's the only drawback It lets me relax on my own time Sipping margarita with lime I make magic for meat I'm a barbecue winner Make a brisket so jiggly It wants to buy me dinner Give me meat And I'll smoke it blindfolded Like the Stephen King of brisket I can do it when I'm loaded David Blaine He's got nothing on me I'm the Gandalf of meat The Obi-Wan of BB Q like the guy from Star Trek, I work time and space when it comes to brisket. All right, we'll take a little slice of here. Feels tender. Whew. Not half bad. Whoa. Not half bad at all. Look at that. Juicy. Just give it a little squeeze there. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it likes that. That's pretty crazy for a select grade brisket. I'm gonna slice into this guy now. Let's see how it actually tastes. I mean, it seems a little bit tough. It's floppy. It's nice and floppy. Let's see how it pulls apart. It actually pulls apart really nice. Let's see if the, the fat is fully rendered. Fat's fully rendered. And we'll give it a taste here. Mm. 
Oh my God. <laughs> I have not experienced that before when eating brisket. Wow. Guys, I think I might've found the best way to cook select grade brisket. This is amazing. This is amazing. I can't even describe it. How do I describe this? It's not overcooked at all. Usually when I eat a brisket, you expect it to be a little bit dry and crumbly, but the fat makes up for that. With this brisket, the meat is so perfectly cooked that it's almost like eating a steak texture. It's super beefy, it's steaky, uh, because it was finished at a lower temperature, I think is the reason. And, and this, is, this tastes amazing. Like it still retains the flavor of the beef. It has the fat, all the interconnective tissue is rendered, the fat is rendered. This is a perfect brisket and it's a select grade brisket, which is insane because every select grade brisket I've cooked has usually turned out really dry and crumbly and doesn't have the extra fat and collagen to uh, make up for that, that crumbliness. Uh, but this is just, it's, reta it's retained so much moisture. Just give a look at that. Look at all that moisture coming out of this thing. I'm gonna take a slice of the point now. This is amazing. <laughs> this is blowing me away right now. Oh, that's good. Wow. Wow. You know what it reminds me of? It has the texture of like a prime rib roast. A well done prime rib roast, but still not, a, not an overcooked prime rib roast for sure. Oh my God, that's so good. What am I gonna say about this brisket? I think I'll start with this. A lot of times I start a YouTube video with a pretty good idea of where I wanna go. And I am not too surprised by the results. I, I know pretty well what the results are gonna be. And when I get to the end, the taste test, I'm usually not very surprised. Even though I might, you know, show it on camera, it's usually, you know, just more of the same. I've cooked a lot of brisket, but this is not more of the same. This is something different. This is something that I haven't experienced before. It's like an elevation of brisket beyond what you can get if you cook it all the way up to 190 or 203. It's like you're getting that beefiness of a, almost like a well done uh, prime rib roast with the fattiness and the fall apart melt in your mouthiness of a brisket. Melt in your mouthiness, obviously not a great descriptor, but you guys get what I mean. It's really good, it's really good. And I would highly recommend trying this method and getting yourself a sous vide because this is uh, a crazy way to experience brisket and it's like nothing I've ever experienced before. I might, I might even say it's changed the way that I think about cooking brisket forever and I might continue to do this sous vide method. What I'd really like to try is this method with like a Wagyu or a prime grade brisket. I think I could create something amazing. So thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you did like the video, consider joining my Patreon page. I'll link it in the description below. We're building an awesome little community there and we chat about this kind of stuff all the time. What's the best way to cook a brisket? And in this video, I think I've found the best way to cook a brisket. Well, at least a select grade brisket. But anyways, I hope to see you guys there and I definitely hope to see you guys in the next video. Hope you'll check it out and happy smoking.